Ozark Opry Video Productions. This program is designed to assist our Lake Area visitors in locating area merchants, products, and services. When the Union Electric Company built Bagno Dam, it was built primarily to generate electricity. Of course, after the beautiful Lake of the Ozarks was formed, long after the war years, it became quite a recreational area. And it has brought many, many changes to our country. And we have a film showing you some of these uh, changes that we think you'll enjoy. It'll be very informative. Bagno Dam also offers tours through their union, through the Bagno Dam and through their power plant that are free of charge and open to the public and one of the fine attractions. But right now, we'd like to take you to the film. Fifty years ago, man and nature joined to form a lake, a dam, and a power station. Few, if any, knew then that the vast Ozark Hill country would be transformed from wilderness into a haven of delight. Proud and persevering men carved this enchanting corner in the Missouri heartland. The energy was converted to electricity, electricity to provide human comfort, and an economic prosperity which continues today. It is fitting that the men who were there helping to make the Great Osage Project a reality tell the story, the Bagnell story. Feasibility studies date back to 1912, although actual construction of Bagnell Dam and Lake of the Ozarks began August 6, 1929. The project was completed in a mere 18 months. But in the spring of 1929, there had been an exceptionally high flood level. And so the planners didn't want to take any chances on the river being high. So as they built their cellular type coffer dams, they built those high enough to take care of any exceptional rise in the river. And they built a, call it freeboard, 35 feet rise, freeboard. And uh, as it turned out, well, they didn't need that at all because during 1930, which was the main part of the construction season uh, period, and into, into 31, the river didn't get up at all. In the beginning of the drought period. And uh, so they weren't held up by any weather factors in the construction. That was, might say, the key uh, part of the entire program. And they worked day and night. Uh, it was never shut down. And, and every man worked. I could say he did he his job. and. Of course, they had the steam shovels here then uh, during the construction then. And, uh, and they had their, uh, when they went to pouring concrete, they had their mixer set up over here and they, and they had conveyor belts that hauled the sand and the gravel in and uh, cement. Cement was shipped in with carloads and it was shoveled on the conveyor belt and, and the sand rattled and it was continuous pour, it was run continually. Stone and Webster Incorporated of Boston was hired by Union Electric Company of St. Louis to engineer the project. The engineering division was divided into three separate uh, 
parts. They had the, uh, the reservoir, which took care of the, of the lake, and uh, then the office engineers, and then the other division was the field engineers. And uh, there was a good rapport between all three of them. Dam and powerhouse construction included all matters of design and building of the dam structure and the generating plant. Also included were a camp, roads, railroad tracks, and temporary structures. Uh, like building, uh, when we built the railroad up uh, the Osage River bottom for the, to haul this material up to the dam, that was done by horsepower. Uh, they pull uh, horses, pull slips, and move the dirt. And uh, the men would use shovels, and there was no machinery. The workers lived in the camp, which was located on the east hillside, adjacent to the dam site. A community sprang up, outfitted with access roads, sanitation system, hospital, commissary, cottages, bunkhouse, and a mess hall. Well, it was, it was nice. There was uh, 28 people lived to slept in the bunkhouse. The stock market crashed just four months after work began. The Mammoth Bagnell Project provided a livelihood for some 4,600 workers and pumped new life into the area. The Great Depression was therefore only an afterthought at Bagnell. The Depression, which was, uh, I'm sure, being felt in many areas of the country uh, during the construction of the dam here, was, uh, was not felt here at all because people were employed. and. Uh, probably mo uh, most of them more gainfully employed than they were earlier. This being the only major construction project during the Depression years, there was a great influx of people into the Bagnell area, all seeking employment. Work continued round the clock. A regular work day was nine hours, sometimes longer. What little leisure time there was was spent mainly in Bagnell, Eldon, or one of the communities spawned by the project, one of which was Dam Site. Uh, they had uh, blackjack tables, poker tables, dice tables. You could go over and lose your week's wages right fast, <laughs> which I did at the time too, which taught me a lesson very cheaply. I always, I've always thought ever since. Uh, tourism potential was rather slow about getting started. Twenty years ago, I thought we had reached a saturation point, and every, every time I uh, look around over the lake area, I'm amazed that it continues to grow as it does. The area economy changed over quickly, from one based largely on agriculture and forestry to a diversified economy, with tourism its hub. Well, uh, of course, I'm living on the farm up there, and we'd go down to Bagnell to do our shopping and trading and take our cream and stuff to sell, and... Uh, and uh, we, maybe you didn't realize, you go down there and from one uh, time down to another, there'd be new buildings spring up here, boarding houses and, uh, and uh, restaurants or a pawn shop or uh, things like that and, uh, and uh, clothing stores. It just all grew there just in a matter of a few months. It is unbelievable how it grew. And then if you come on up the road towards the dam then, which was at that time just an old county wagon road, and uh, you look out here in all directions, there'd be cabins, hundreds of people living in all these hollers, and uh, it's just unbelievable how it changed over in just a matter of a few weeks. Osage plant began commercial operation in the Union Electric System on October 16, 1931, to serve customers in St. Louis and River Mines, Missouri. Electrification came to the lake area two months later on Christmas Eve. The first distribution pole was set on the south side of the Osage River. 24 customers along what is now known as the Strip were served at the outset. In all, 937,000 cubic yards of earth was excavated. Rock excavation totaled 72,500 cubic yards. 2,100,000 square feet of formwork was done. 30,000 acres of land was cleared for the reservoir. 
3,450 tons of reinforcing and structural steel were used. Concrete in the dam is enough to build an 18-foot roadway from St. Louis to Topeka, Kansas. Enough lumber was used during the project to build an Atlantic City-type boardwalk 60 miles long. During construction, 60,000 carloads of materials were hauled to the site. Placed end to end, the cars would form a train from St. Louis to Chicago and back. Water impounded in the reservoir totaled some 650 billion gallons. That's more than enough to supply the daily needs of the city of St. Louis for 12 years. Many of the construction workers employed by Stone and Webster joined Union Electric upon completion of the project and now retired continue to call the lake area home. Well, after being there over 50 years, you uh, hesitant to move, I think. And uh, that's the people I've known for 50 years. I stay with them. In placing the Osage River at the service of an energy-hungry people, the Ozark Hills were converted from the primitive to a modern-day resort center and vacation paradise. Enjoyed by thousands each year, Lake of the Ozarks has become as all-American as apple pie and the ice cream cone. Now, 50 years after completion of the Great Osage Project, the area enjoys a wealth of economic, cultural, and recreational benefits. There really was virtually nothing here in this central part of Missouri except Ozark scenery and and mountains at the time that the lake was first formed. There were a few farms and so forth, but uh, the growth over the 50 years has been tremendous. And the Lake of the Ozarks area, of course, has just an awful lot of things going for it. This is the uh, largest lake in the United States where a person can purchase uh, property on the waterfront and, and uh, generally within reason do what he would like to do with it and develop his own business, develop his own home and enjoy the waters. Uh, it is a nice uh, lake for uh, many sports. It's a good fishing lake. It's a good lake to swim in. Of course, there are a lot of boats, big cruisers and so forth here. Uh, the climate is very good. We're in the central part of the United States, accessible from all over the United States, and we do have visitors here from throughout the United States. And uh, it, it's always interesting during the midsummer season to notice the traffic on the road and the different license plates where these people come from and and now with some of the major uh, resorts developing we're uh, getting a lot of foreign tourists here too uh, a paris magazine not long ago carried a, a lengthy article on uh, um, one of the big resorts here and and all the things that it had to to offer and uh, we are getting tourists from abroad as well as the united states now and that's one of the recent things we've seen growing area. It's uh, also developing not only as resort and tourist area, but as um, a residential area as well. Uh, never a month passes here, I guess. We don't hear of a new subdivision starting, and uh, these lots are selling, and people are building here. Uh, another rather recent thing that's developed is the condominium-type home. We have a number of those going in where people can own a home and uh, have someone to take care of it period of years that it's not being used and so forth and now we're getting into timeshare condominiums where a person can use it for a part of the year for the vacation and then others can use it other times during the year so uh, really as a major resort area we continue to grow. The toil and talent of good men and the bounty of mother nature created a memorial to what can be accomplished for the good of mankind. The legacy is a lake, a dam and a power station. This power plant, when it was first installed uh, as a part of the Union Electric system, provided about one-third of the base uh, capacity, uh, total capacity of the Union Electric system. At the, and being of uh, that size, it naturally was expected to supply quite a bit of the base load of the system. The has now been reversed. We are strictly known as a emergency peaking plant. The plant appears much the same as it did 50 years ago. Well, essentially, uh, operation now is not significantly different than it was 50 years ago. The equipment, by and large, at least the major equipment, is all the same equipment that was originally installed and is held up, which attests to the craftsmanship of that era. 
On their 50th anniversary, we salute Bagnell Dam, Osage Plant, and Lake of the Ozarks, and celebrate in observance of what man and nature have brought together. I kind of, while I was on it, I also kind of like to brag about helping build the Bagnell Dam. <laughs> Of course, I had a very small part in it, but I was there. Thank you for watching Channel 5, your 24-hour-a-day lake information channel.